Happy Sunday to you, dear brothers and sisters. I wish to welcome you to the second Sunday of Easter. Today is also called the Divine Mercy Sunday. In the words of Pope Francis, in his Misericordia Vultus, he says that the name of God is mercy. In my reflections today that I take from the first reading, the second reading, and of course the Gospel, i like us to remember something that we also are beneficiaries of the mercy of God. And since we are beneficiaries of the mercy of God, we are expected to take the mercy of God as our own model in living a merciful life. Now, if you are used to watching Netflix or you are a fan of the Hollywood movies, you know that you may have noticed that Usually when someone suffers from betrayal or someone is, you know, is punished or the person feels uh, ill-treated, oppressed, you know, marginalized, when the person comes back, he or she comes for revenge, you know, in movies. But in the case of Jesus, when he returned, he returned not to punish, but to uplift. And that's the beginning of where we see the mercy of God playing out in the gospel today, the gospel passage we have today. The fact that Jesus returned after all his disciples did to him. When I say after all his disciples did to him, remember that all the disciples abandoned him. His apostles abandoned him. The only person who remained with him was John the Beloved. When we talk about those who betrayed Jesus, it was not just Peter and Judas, but all the apostles except John, all of them abandoned him. It's a kind of betrayal. But even though that they treated him that way, he still came back to them. He came back not to revenge. Instead of revenge, he gave them mercy. Instead of being disappointed, he appointed them. Because in the gospel today, we see that Jesus made them instruments of mercy. Whatever sin you forgive, they are forgiven. And this is actually where Jesus established the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of confession. So it is biblical to confess your sin because that is where God is giving us mercy. That is where God, through his mercy, offers us total healing. So when Jesus returned, instead of, you know, blaming the disciples and apostles, he gave them fame. So from blame to fame, instead of closing the door against them, he opened the door for them. Instead of punishing them, he rewarded them. That is the mercy of God. Instead of walking away from them, he decided to accompany them. As we hear him say in Matthew chapter 28, I will be with you until the end of time. Isn't this awesome? So instead of scolding them for abandoning him when he needed them the most, he strengthened them. Instead of giving them labor, he decided to favor them. Instead of punishing them or pushing them away, he brought them closer. Instead of denying his presence to them, he offered his presence to them. That is the mercy of God. So, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus' return is a demonstration of divine mercy. That the mercy of God is bigger than our mistakes. That the mercy of God is bigger than our shortcomings. His mercy is greater than all the sins and mistakes you may have made in the past, even the ones you're going to make in the future. The mercy of God is bigger than our shortcomings. He's bigger than everything we may think that we may have done wrong. And that is why, usually I tell my friends, it is okay to cry. It is okay to recognize your failures, but it is more important to focus on the mercy of God. This does not mean that God condones any kind of evil doing. But remember that the mercy of God tempers the harshness of the justice of God. It doesn't mean that God condones evil. But even before we, we ask God to forgive us, He has given the mercy. But when we ask for forgiveness, we appropriate the mercy of God. Because, of course, we have to take responsibility for whatever sin we may have committed. So, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus returned today 
and gave opportunity to his apostles to become instruments of mercy. Because Jesus is thinking about us. God is thinking about you. God knows your human dynamics. Jesus knows your human dynamics. He knows that we are going to make mistakes. He knew that. And that's why he gave us this opportunity that we may confess our sins and receive divine mercy in the confessional. Dear brothers and sisters, even in the gospel today, we see that Thomas was not there when Jesus came for the first time. It was not the fault of Jesus that Thomas was not there. But what did he do? He gave a second opportunity. To be merciful is to give second chance. To be merciful is to give third chance. To be merciful is to give uncountable chance or chances. You see, you are living with your wife. You are living with your husband. You have friends. They make mistakes. Nobody is above mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. So why should I not forgive you? Why should I not be merciful to you? The Bible says in Psalm 130 verse 3, If God will get a ball pen and a paper and write down our sins, all of us will die. You know why? Because the wages of sin is death. But God does not take note of our sins because of his mercy. It's not as if God is suffering from um, you know, memory loss, but because of his mercy. So, Today, as we celebrate the divine mercy, let us remember, as I said in the beginning, that we are all beneficiaries of the mercy of God. And since we are beneficiaries of the mercy of God, justice demands that we should also be merciful. In the first reading today, I like to pick out the attitude of the apostles, the early Christians and disciples, you know, how they live their life. The way they live their life can become, you know, like a... A lesson for us to learn how to be merciful. I want to pick out the word detachment. They lived community life. They loved one another. They prayed together. They did everything together. But I want to pick out that word detachment that comes out clearly in the attitude of the early Christians. When I talk about uh, you know detachment, in the first reading, their detachment was more on the material detachment. Of course, it included also non-material detachment. But in this case, for us to be merciful, we have to practice non-material detachment. There are many things that stop us from becoming merciful to other people. Like, you know, when we have inferiority complex can be prejudice, anger, jealousy, arrogance, pride, unbelief, bitterness, resentment. There are so many things that can stop us from, you know, being merciful. And those things are the things we need to detach ourselves from. There are some people who are afraid of being merciful because of what happened to them in the past. So if you are fearful when it comes to showing mercy, you have to detach yourself. So whatever, whatever attitude, whatever vice, whatever connections, whatever thing that stops you or stops me from being merciful, we have to detach ourselves from that. And that's what we see in the first reading today. Of course, the, the early Christians, they had their own problems, but because they were able to detach, because the love was there, because the patience was there, because the understanding was there, so they were able to be merciful. And they forgave each other. They forgave one another. My dear sisters and brothers, in our second reading today, St. Peter tells us that through our Lord Jesus Christ, God gave us new opportunity, a new birth, a new identity. So why can't I, why can't you also let go, forgive, and be merciful to your wife? Be merciful to your husband. Be merciful to your children. Be merciful to your neighbor. Be merciful to your parents. The more we keep things in our hearts, the more we make our lives miserable. But the more we let go, we give ourselves the gift of freedom. Dear friends in Christ, the divine mercy is with us. It heals us. It restores us. It strengthens us. So do not allow whatever 
you may have experienced ugly experiences in the past to stop you from being true to your nature. Our nature is that we are created as images of love and mercy is a function of love. Let us give thanks to God for the gift of divine mercy and let us decide today to be merciful to one another. God bless you and happy Sunday. Divine mercy, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you.